uh, good morning. Um, well, like Mike said, what we want to do is give you guys a little insight into what Banner does from a standpoint of uh, developing an easy wireless solution for some of your applications you might have out there. Uh, fits kind of across the board. We're not very specific on you know, what we can talk to, uh, whether it be on the sensing side or whether it be on the uh, you know, PLC or controller side. Um, so we're, we're very open on that, uh, that approach. We don't want to limit um, you know, the applications that are out there, so we're going to keep it pretty open. Um, what we'll do is just give you a quick overview of some of the features that you know, put Banner a little bit different in the wireless marketplace than uh, most of the other folks that are out there. So which one do I? Just go ahead. And just the normal? OK. There you go. All right. So what we were going to do is we're going to talk a little bit again uh, about what makes us a little bit different. And we're going to cover four areas, if you would. Talk a little bit about the radio and what makes us a little different with the radio side of things. We'll also talk about the I.O. Uh, and the power usage on these guys and, and what makes it beneficial from those standpoints. Um, so when we look at what we've got going on. Down here. Up, down there. Right there. Um, there we go. Just got to press harder on it. Um, again, what we're trying to do is make that, that simple, reliable solution. So what Banner does, we offer you know, kind of the full gamut. We offer the radios, uh, accessories such as antennas, uh, surge suppression, cables, proper you know, power sources, things like that. So we've got the whole suite of tools for you uh, going forward in your applications. One of our primary concerns at Banner as we developed the product was you know, what's required in various environments. So what are you looking for in your specific environment? Well, a couple of things that we want to do is make sure that we can integrate with the existing equipment. We're not forcing customers to purchase a new sensor because of the way our, our radios work. We will work with existing sensors that are in the field. Uh, and we'll work with existing controls. We also want to be sure that we're, we're scalable. And uh, you may start your application with um, maybe just one remote radio and uh, another uh, radio at your control side of things. But you may need to grow that in the future or your desires to grow that, whether it be a fixed uh, radio where you're, you're always communicating and getting information from one location or maybe something mobile that you want to move around and get a better idea of what's going on in your, your applications or in your, your uh, processes. We also want to be uh, you know, able to live in those, those harsh environments of a process world, whether it be from the, uh, the environment itself, the physical environment, uh, chemicals, liquids, things like that. Also. Uh, be able to live in uh, a noisy environments from a wireless standpoint. And the final thing is we want to be power efficient. Um, the main reason for that is because a lot of reasons why people have not deployed sensors to date in the applications is because uh, it's been expensive. Uh, they, they don't have power out there, so they'd have to pull a whole new conduit section and cabling. And that's what our remote uh, capabilities with, with battery power give you. It allows you to go into areas where you've been maybe a not necessarily avoiding, but it hasn't been cost effective to get out there yet. All right, so the typical wireless options that, that are out there or, or have been out there in the past is you go out, you pick up a radio, whatever that radio style may be. Uh, maybe it's a cabinet mount, maybe it's a panel mount. Uh, you then go from that radio to your I.O. solution. Uh, you look at building up your panel, your enclosure, um, and, and getting that all done. And then finally, getting your I.O. wired into the radio system. Banner does it a little bit different than this, this approach. We wanted to take out kind of that whole assembly process of bringing together the radio and the method for handling I.O. and put it into one housing. So that's what we've done. We've taken the radio, uh, the battery or, or power source, if you will, and the I.O. tucked it into one housing to make it a little easier to manage in your, maybe your remote locations or even at your uh, control point, at your uh, PLC or your process controller. So we've, we've tried to eliminate that assembly process and uh, make it very simple, very uh, approachable from a uh, in, you know, quick implementation and ease of, ease of installation. So the first uh, kind of thing we'll talk about specifics on this is what makes our, our radio design um, you know, work. What, what are some of the things that we do in it? How does it behave? How does it work? Um, we are a 900 
uh, I'm sorry, 902 to 928 uh, base radio or 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, these are all in the ISM band, so they are, are free. There's no licensing that you need to do in this. Um, it allows us to kind of freely move about and do a lot of applications with the two bands. Uh, typically, we do 900 megahertz, um, mostly in the U.S. Uh, from the standpoint, it provides us a large, uh, you know, kind of base, if you would, from a uh, application solution where you may need longer range or the ability to to get through your environment, whether it be uh, separation of of uh, your facility by walls or maybe different buildings. Um, that gives us a really good reach with the 900 megahertz. And the 2.4 provides us for greater speed. So there's some gives and takes with each one, and we got solutions in each area for you. What we do with each one of these guys is we do a frequency hopping spread spectrum approach, which means that the radios, when they're talking, they are always shifting their frequencies. The radios do not sit on one frequency and transmit uh, in fact, when, when, when one of our gateways, the main radio, is talking to a node, one of our remote units, uh, each time he talks to that node, he's talking to that node on a different frequency, as well as when he's talking to multiple nodes in one scan through his network, each one of those nodes is on a different frequency. So we're, we're very quick to utilize a frequency and then get off of that frequency this allows us to, to hop around and also allows us to provide uh, good maximum power usage on the radio. We also have another feature built in, which is the time division multiple access approach. And what this does is it, it ensures some repeatability in your process. One of the things that wireless can bring to the table is, is unpredictable timing. Uh, in other words, if, uh, if we're expecting to get some information back from one of the remote locations, uh, but he is competing with another radio, uh, we may uh, typically, or you would typically hear uh, maybe the stronger radio of the two, he would get his signal through. We, by doing uh, TDMA, ensure that each radio has this chunk of time within the network to talk so that that radio and the gateway are only talking at that time nobody else is talking. It ensures good repeatability. It ensures that the, each radio or remote radio has the ability to talk back to the gateway with its I.O. information. The kind of the final thing that helps make this a really nice, strong architecture is we use a binding method within the radio where the remote radios are bound to the gateway and how we do that is, is basically it's all done right through the radio, right through the displays on the radio, where you utilize the, the, the push buttons in the display to simply put the gateway in a binding mode, and then whichever radios you want to have talk to that gateway, you simply add those in, put those in the binding mode, and they become part of that group or that network. Um, so you can have a network that's already existing and add multiple radios that again scalable so once you bind a network you can always add to it well um, all right how do I transfer or how do I find out what's happening switches on the radios, you can actually go ahead and view what is happening on the remote radio's display. And then what's on its display is relative to the I.O. that's attached to that remote radio. So now you can look at the remote radio's sensor's inputs. You can see that same information appearing on the gateway. becomes a very nice uh, tool when you're working with um, maybe hazardous rated environments where you cannot go in where the node uh, or remote radio may be located, so you cannot see what the sensor is, is providing the radio as far as the signal, you can mimic that over in the safe area with the gateway. Very handy in those classified areas. And the way that we also want to look at this radio is, is having the ability to simply pull in some I.O. So in this case here, we have a, a high-level sensor on a tank. Once that sensor is activated, we send that signal from the remote 
radio, node number one in this case, to the gateway. The gateway then communicates that to the PLC or the process controller. And based upon what, what the level is or reaching that high se sensor, the PLC will tell the gateway, OK, now I need you to tell this remote radio node number two to close the valve. Um, that's very typical, and that's, that's really how the system's designed to work, is pull information from one location, control information at another, or even just getting information locally and sending that, that information back to the gateway radio, let the processor deal with that, massage what he needs to do, and send back maybe a command back to the same radio. So that's a, kind of a heart and soul of what we're doing with this, with this system. Now this also comes up with what happens if you have an issue and one of the nodes cannot talk to the gateway. This is a, a, a feature that's built into our radio system where that one node that can no longer communicate to the gateway, the gateway will recognize that and the gateway can then take action. He can force outputs on other radios to take certain actions. So if the, the uh, valve was actually uh, energized and, and held open, we may then say, nope, we're going to uh, de-energize that output on that node number two so it closes the valve. Because again, I don't know what the level is uh, in the tank that's being measured by node number one. We can also have outputs on node number one take certain action. So you can, have, you can develop kind of a safe harbor situation where if you don't know what's happening, you can force outputs to a safe state. The other thing that you can do with this is from the gateway, you can communicate the loss of the radio and the specific radio back to your processor, and you can alarm out so an operator may look at, uh, at his screen and say, we have a problem, we need to go look at this radio. Uh, so it's a great little tool for finding out what's going on within your system as well, and also preventing you know, uh, tank overflows and things like that, because we are able to control outputs even if we can't communicate to the radio for some reason. And how do we you know, kind of make sure as we're setting up a system that the radio is working? Each of the radios has built into it a site survey feature. So from the gateway radio, you can simply go into that, that gateway and basically point that gateway to go look at a certain node, and it will tell you the RF link quality between the gateway and that node. Great for deployment. Uh, we try to do a very simple approach, as you see on the screen. We've got basically four different uh, uh, variations or, or levels of performance on the, the radio signal, where you can uh, we identify a number of missed packets, which is important to know. If uh, we have interference, you you want to know how we'll have to deal with that, maybe through antenna work and things like that, all the way up to an extremely strong signal, which we uh, do know with a, a green or a G on the display. Uh, so we make it very basic, easy to understand, and again, a great method for ensuring that your uh, RF system is set up properly uh, as you go forward with implementing your, your application solution. Um, mentioned a little bit about, you know, if, if, what if the, the RF uh, signal is not uh, what we really desire, maybe we want to get a little more, maybe we have a few missed packets. Um, we offer, like I mentioned earlier, we offer antenna selections. Um, whether it be a multi-directional antenna, um, which is what actually comes with the radio when you purchase it. There's a small antenna that's included. So right out of the box, you can do most applications uh, for on-facility work. And definitely, you can do uh, application work right at your desk. Make sure you get everything going right there in a, in a simple, easy fashion. You don't have to order a multitude of part numbers to test out the system. Uh, it's all included with it. Um, we've also, we offer multi-directional antennas, and we also offer directional antennas, depending upon your applications and how far you have to reach out uh, into your environment. So that's a little bit about the radio architecture. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the power design. Uh, one of the biggest things that we were shooting for with the power design is to be able to allow these guys, these radios, to be deployed in areas that you may have been prevented uh, from deploying a sensor or getting information from in the past. We offer really three different approaches on the power side. We offer the capability on all the radios to operate on 10 to 30 volts DC. We also have a battery function. And you see uh, two depictions of that. Uh, lower uh, left hand in the center of the screen, 
you see our two battery uh, packs. The one in the lower left hand is a six pack of uh, our lithium thiol batteries. The one in the center is our, our single battery pack, and they're all D cell uh, size batteries. Uh, they give us um, in a range from 19,000 uh, to 21,000 uh, milliamp hours of uh, operation. So a lot of punch to these guys. And then we also have, um, if you need even more heavy lifting for maybe the sensor you want to deploy, or maybe it's an outdoor application, um, maybe a reservoir, uh, you want to know the level of that, whether it be for your factory water runoff or if it's uh, municipal applications. Uh, we offer a solar package as well. And all of these guys are, are plug and play right into the radio. So they all have a connector, as you see off the, uh, the six-pack uh, radio. Uh, there's a connector on there, so you simply connect that to the bottom of the radio, and you've got power to it. Um, we try to make these guys so you don't have to come in and, and do a lot of wrenching and connecting up of cables to get to the power sources. So how do we work these batteries? Well, this 3.6 volt battery, and what we're doing with it is we will we'll increase its voltage. We'll give it a little bit of a punch, and we'll bring it up to about uh, maximum about 24 to 26 volts. Um, so we kind of buck boost that power. Uh, that allows us to operate sensors that will maybe require uh, 24 volts. They may require 15 volts to operate, and we're doing this all off of 6 volts. So we can, do, we can provide you a power boost on these guys, and uh, again, lots of endurance for the application. So how do we do this? How do we run these sensors off of a battery? Well, what we do is through the radio is we will control when power is available to the sensor. So we will leave the, uh, we'll switch the power off that the sensor is connected to, and at a given time that's selectable by, by yourself for your given application, we will power up the sensor for a period of time. Uh, we call that our warm-up time for the sensor. And then at the end of that period of time, we will remove power from the sensor. While it's powered up, the, the radio is actually sampling the output from that sensor and forwarding that information back to your process control. By cycling the power on and off, we're able to you know, extend the life of the battery um, and work with a multitude of different sensors um, that may need different types of power for different lengths of time. So again, very flexible, and we didn't want to have you know, extremely fixed values that uh, would eliminate maybe a sensor that you may have in the field. So we try to keep it very open and very flexible for, for what you may have already deployed. Um, some of the things you know, on the power design that we want to do is we really want to make sure it's, it's flexible and it's mobile. That's one of the things that, that customers use our radios for an awful lot. They may have those fixed tank applications where they're looking at a level um, and it may never move. Uh, in other words, the radio and the sensor are always dedicated to that one application. However, there's a lot of applications that might be temperature related or humidity related where they want to sample around their facility and uh, they never had the ability to do that before. Uh, now they have the ability to deploy a radio where they may need it and uh, maybe deploy it there for a week and gather some information and move it to another location. So it's a super no hassle installation, you know, for either fixed or mobile applications. Um, again, you can expand the system because we've got the power capabilities and the ability within the uh, gateway radio. You can expand the system out so you can, you can either grow it physically over greater distances or just add more devices into it, more radios into the system. And again, no software is required to do a majority of the work. We do have a software piece available. Uh, it's available off the web. And uh, that just allows you a little bit more fine tuning if you need it in your applications, but most of our customers don't. So it gives you, again, a little bit of access to those remote locations you might have um, and uh, that you've uh, kind of avoided or haven't had the opportunity to get the information you wanted out of it, maybe because of cost or, or just didn't have power over there. So a, a nice method for doing that. Um, some battery approaches that we do. Um, you saw the, the picture of the battery uh, previously. I wanted to give you a little idea. The, uh, down the lower left-hand corner, we also do some radios. And this is an uh, inside picture of the radio that would have an internal battery right in it. So we use the, utilize the same battery, but we'll put the battery internal to the radio. Uh, that allows us a smaller package. So one 
one package holds everything, and uh, that may be used for like a temperature and humidity sensor that you want to move around your facility. You just now have one piece of hardware to move around, and, and you're all set with that. We also uh, do, you know, battery operations. You see um, kind of depiction up above with the tanks, where we'll do uh, a little bit more heavy lifting sensors, where we may be using an ultrasonic sensor in a non-classified area. Um, and the battery function and the way we cycle power to that ultrasonic allows us to, to operate that sensor for a long period of time. And, and we may be talking years, depending upon how often you want to sample the level in, in your tanks. But we could operate uh, years on that single battery and do your applications. We also do things that are in rated uh, enclosures for hazardous environments. We have two depictions there. We have our larger housing up in the upper right-hand corner. And then we have our smaller uh, rated housing. Um, both of those guys operate on battery, and the battery is contained with them. So you have, uh, again, an approach that you can now deploy into a hazardous environment, a wireless solution with the appropriate sensor. Um, maybe that's something that was uh, hampering you earlier was the power source in those areas. And then we do unique sensors as well, um, you, where we combine a sensor, uh, such as the one in the bottom center, that is there to detect vehicles. When well, we're detecting vehicles coming and going from your facility, um, or this may be at your loading dock or, or even forklift, um, you know, interaction with uh, roll-up doors at your facility. But in that case where we're showing the, the sensor housing here, the sensor, the battery, and the radio all tucked in one. So again, unique solutions, uh, hopefully helping out in some various applications you might have. So a little bit about our, our I.O. design now and what we do in there. Again, we talked about uh, early on about not kind of stifling the solutions that you can put into the, the uh, radio itself. We want to make sure it's open. Uh, so if you need to bring in a digital signal, uh, contact closure, um, if you want a uh, snap action switch off of a temperature or vibration monitor, you can bring that in. If you have analog signals, uh, 0 to 10 volts or 4 to 20 or a 0 to 20 signal, we'll accept those guys in as well as uh, thermal couples, thermistors, RTDs. We'll also deal with uh, serial communication devices as well. We have methods for bringing that information in, into the system. So depending upon your I.O., um, we can work with it and in utilizing our battery function, uh, we can power up your, your desired I.O. Uh, component and have that information come into the radio, process it in the radio, and then have the system take action for you. So again, we want to keep it uh, wide open, a lot of different I.O. capabilities for you. Little example within the radios, uh, the connections are all made via a terminal block inside the radio. Some of the uh, examples that you might have out there is you can get radios with two, four, six, maybe eight digital inputs. Uh, you can also mix up where you have some digital inputs and some analog inputs. You can also get within the same radios where you'll have digital inputs and digital outputs, as well as analog inputs and analog outputs. So it's kind of a nice functionality within the radios where you have the ability to bring in whatever you may need to do uh, for your application. There are limitations when you start looking at you know, pure battery function and how many you can bring in, but we can address those uh, kind of on an application by application basis. We also have with the, uh, the system, we do communications out of it because of uh, the ability to have this scale up into a large number of remote radios. We communicate out um, from our main gateway in a number of different ways to interface with your process controller. Uh, so we do a, a, a Modbus RTU format, uh, 485, that comes uh, right on board with our standard gateways. We also have another gateway that utilizes uh, a Modbus TCP IP as well as an Ethernet IP interface on it. So three pretty generic methods for getting information from us, or actually, I'm sorry, from your I.O. components through us and out to your process controller. Uh, give a little example of uh, the format here. This would be an example of just some basic I.O. transfer. I've got three different radios uh, out there. Um, they've got some inputs and some outputs happening on each one of those. I'll take the inputs and outputs from those radios, and I'll have them come out over where you see the number one or the, the black labeled uh, radio on the left-hand side. 
I'll handle the inputs and outputs from the remote field through the one gateway. So a very simple way of just dealing with some I.O. that you want to have uh, out in the field. You don't want to communicate back uh, via, via a protocol to a PLC. You just want to handle some I.O. This is a very simple method for doing it. With the same system, you can also do it where you communicate out of that same exact gateway. You also have your communications capabilities. So now you can have, you, you can either have I.O. on your gateway um, and utilize it, or you can utilize the onboard uh, communications protocol. Here we're just showing a Modbus connection off to your host system. You can also uh, take that. We mentioned earlier about the Ethernet uh, IP capability. And uh, you can do the same thing where you have remote nodes talking to a gateway that has Ethernet IP capabilities on board. And you can bring multiples of those together and, uh, and have them talk into uh, basically a, a switch, a managed switch, or a hub back to your host system. Now this brings up a good point here, too. You can also have multiples of our network components side by side. So you can have multiple and different networks within your facility. If you wanted to isolate a network that is uh, uh, specific to a certain process from another network, you can do that and you can isolate the radios via the binding function, which we, we talked a little bit about earlier in how we ensure that the radios are, are talking to the proper gateway. Um, so again, you can have multiple networks side by side and you can also uh, deal with multiple protocols and ways of getting the I.O. out of your sensors through the radios and into your processor. So a couple different application looks we'll, we'll take a look at now with kind of winning with wireless. What, what, what were, are some good applications and, uh, that we've done and where customers have taken us and had us solve their, their problems in the past? A couple of them, very simple, straightforward. Um, probably one of the, the easiest uh, wireless approaches is where you may have a failed conduit, whether it be uh, at a facility with remote tanks or whether it be in your, your building, um, wireless becomes a great replacement for those types of situations. Uh, you maybe want to simply add um, a basic control, uh, put a variable frequency drive as an example out at a remote location. Now you can do that, provide power to the variable frequency drive, and uh, we will be the guy sending over the control signals. Um, and we also do basic uh, elements like uh, uh, processes starting up. You want to turn on a vacuum or a blower in association to that process, and that blower may be located uh, several hundred feet away uh, at the side of the building. You can utilize a simple wireless solution to do an application like that very inexpensively. Um, tank level control. Uh, if you have a tank farm, you need to monitor the level. If you want just a high level uh, alarm, if you want to do an analog signal, multiple methods for doing that again and, and taking uh, you know here we have three tanks you can take the information from all three tanks and send that back to one general location so it makes it very easy to do something where maybe in the past because the location of tanks you kind of avoided implementing you know the sensors because of uh, the wiring cost as an example a couple other applications um, you know preventive maintenance looking at a bearing temp on a mission critical motor within your facility. Uh, you can monitor that. We're showing an infrared uh, solution here with a, a sensor connected to the radio. It could be a thermal couple for Mr. RTD that uh, you have in contact with the motor. Uh, it could also be a temperature snap action switch uh, that could be coming back to the radio. Again, something that uh, prior to this would be cost prohibitive to put conduit and cable over to there. Now you can do it as a wireless solution to monitor that mission critical device. You can also look at uh, applications. The, the bottom center picture is talking about applications where you may be in kind of a clean room environment. It's certified and you need to get the information from in that room to outside that room to a process controller or a, uh, maybe an operator panel. Uh, by doing wireless, you're not having to break the seal. You're not having to put any cables or anything like that through the wall so you don't have to worry about your certification. Simple way of avoiding having to have that certification process done to a uh, location or a, a room within your facility. 
A couple other applications, very typical. We do a lot in irrigation and farming and agriculture. We're showing up above. Um, I'm from the Wisconsin area, so we do a lot of cranberry work up there. And we're doing temperature and uh, moisture monitoring in, in uh, cranberry fields or general irrigation. We also do a lot um, with like uh, flare stacks, on, uh, whether it be um, burning off methane in a landfill or whichever process you may have. Um, we have a lot of customers that are uh, utilizing this right now because in the past they didn't have a method for doing that in a proper fashion. So whether they were, they were uh, you know, in compliance with the government bodies that come and uh, inspect them or not, uh, sometimes they just didn't have the ability of getting the, the information they needed over to where they needed it at. So here's a case of the flare stack monitor. We also do uh, applications in, in facilities, such as the uh, eyewash application. Their uh, typical application is they want to know when the eyewash uh, station has been activated. So in certain cases, depending upon the material that they're processing at that facility, they may want to, as an eyewash station is activated, uh, let somebody know in HR that may be related in the safety side of things. Uh, we've got some customers that auto come out of us and they auto dial 911 and it lets them know which exact station within their facility has been activated. So uh, the authorities are, act, uh, are notified immediately to a situation that's going on at the uh, facility. Uh, so some basic stuff. In typical applications also that we're doing, a lot of in the upper right hand corner, replacing those cable tracks. You may have high voltage and uh, instrumentation in information flowing through the same cable track. Uh, you get noise introduced there. Uh, that's the nice thing about wireless. It's pretty clean as far as signal coming in is what you get out at the other end as well as slip ring arrangements. Uh, two, more, two of the more popular applications for uh, maybe on a machine or on a process type applications. Last couple uh, applications, we do you know, stuff in, in, in kind of a high speed application. If we're doing filling levels or, or monitoring things that happen at a high rate of speed, you can do that with wireless uh, based upon your application. You can uh, do high speed counting, filling applications, and what happens there is the radio itself stores a lot of the data, the remote radio, and just sends information back to the gateway based upon what he's accumulating. Maybe it's a count or a total or a, a rate that the machine is running at, and we will send that or save that information and forward it on. We also do things with AGV controls and uh, you know starting, stopping, uh, anything along those lines. And then definitely the last one down in the bottom, uh, remote. Uh, information, uh, maybe it's uh, for a municipal application, maybe it's for a year facility, uh, monitoring remote items, and we do that in a number of ways uh, with different radios. So hopefully it gives you a good idea of what we have going on as far as uh, different applications. One of our final ones here, we also do radios um, based on an Ethernet approach, and one of the typical applications customers use that for is for video surveillance. So you can simply put a uh, power over Ethernet, if you would, um, camera onto the uh, onto the radio, and you have a very simple method for transmitting, uh, you know, what's going on in that remote location back over to uh, your desk or or to uh, somebody that's monitoring those situations. So again, a uh, little bit of an idea of different applications that we're dealing with um, in a, in the approach of wireless and handling I/O and and getting the information back from uh, where it's out there in the field to where you kind of need it at your desk.